right, y'all. So we have the latest patch here. We know we're gonna find out what's gonna be going on within this patch, the changes that's gonna be made. Let me know which ones are your favorite. What's some of your favorite changes? Maybe what are some changes that you don't like and you're not looking forward to? But yeah, let's see. Let's see what's going on. New talent, Warcry. Hey guys, what's up? So we have a new update on Advanced Server featuring new talents and the purple buff. First up is the new talent, Warcry. After every 3 consecutive basic attacks on an enemy hero, all damage dealt increases by 8% for 6 seconds. As you can see, my normal damage is 214. But once the talent kicked in after 3 basic attacks, my damage went up to 231. So the requirement is 3 basic attacks and then your damage will increase. And it will affect your skill damage as well. From this example, Clean's ultimate increased from 465 to 502 because of Warcraft. So who can use this talent? Anyone who can do 3 quick basic attacks is a viable Warcry user. Zilong and his passive Nothing can trigger the effect with just one basic attack. Irita's wow. normal bolt yeah. counts as 2 basic attacks. Claude and Dexter's basic attacks count as 2, making it faster to activate Warcry. Beatrix and her Nibiru gets instant activation in a single shot. Remember, it only activates when you hit an enemy hero. Here we can see it cannot trigger the effect from jungle and minions. You have to hit an enemy hero to activate the requirement. And there's also a 4 second cooldown to the talent. Heroes whose main damage source or skills and basic attacks will also benefit from this talent. Examples are Alucard, Martius, and Yusen Shin. Their skills will be amplified be by one cry when using their combos. Yeah. However, it's worth noting that this is a tier 3 talent. You'll have to replace the other utility talents like Quantum Charge and Brave Smite. Moving on, we have the next talent and it's called Temporal Rain. When using an ultimate, the rest of the skills will have their cooldown reduced by 50%. Example is Veil. That's so my fine. first and second skills are on cooldown. If I use my ultimate, the cooldown of skill 1 and 2 gets reduced by 50%. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Yeah, that's sick. There's ah! a ton of heroes. Right, bro, so people going to be spamming abilities now. Certain abilities, that's going to be annoying for, bro. <laughs> like think of how think about how hard Nana is gonna be CCing people now. So she can throw out her second ability, then drop her ultimate and stun them some more. Then by the time the ultimate's done, she can throw out her second ability again. Like that is wild. Like so certain heroes is gonna be broken with that. Those that can benefit from this new talent. Eudora will only have to wait a few seconds before she can reuse her second skill after a combo. Vexana can complete the one to combo after her ultimate. Then do it again, it's crazy. Support heroes like Estus can heal more often after using their ultimate. Abusing it with Alice's ultimate is not possible because the talent has a 20 second cooldown. That means you need to wait 20 seconds before you can use Temporal Rain again. So who else will be a good Temporal Rain user? Nah, nah, Next is sure. the purple buff adjustment. Who the developers think, be think some heroes it. rely too much on the purple. Next is the purple buff adjustment. The developers think some heroes rely too much on the purple buff. To fix this issue, they did two things. Number one is they reduced the mana and the energy reduction cost that you get from the purple buff. That's minus 20% on mana while 5% on energy. Number two is they've lowered the mana and the energy cost of heroes so that they can still do well even if they don't have the purple buff. So even if the enemy invaded the purple buff, heroes should still perform well. And the heroes... Yeah, it's certain... It's certain like, this is actually fire. That's, that's fire because... Certain heroes are so buff dependent, it's crazy. But if they make it so the hero is still viable, then that, that's actually going to change the meta a lot because taking buffs right now is part of the meta and it's a big deal because you put the enemies behind and you get a bunch of advantages. But that puts them at less of a disadvantage even if you invade and you put them behind a little bit. They can still do other things to make up for it and then their character will still be viable. We can see some returns of fannies because of this. That, that is fire that receive the adjustments are the following. Of course, we have Fanny as number one, where they reduce the energy cost for second and ultimate skill. Lancelot, Akai, Roger, Karina, Lunox, Amon, Bane, and Esmeralda had their mana cost lowered as well. It's mostly on their first and second skill, so that they don't rely too much on the purple buff. Leslie is also included in the list, but she's not known to use the purple buff, right? Anyway, since it's lowered, this is a good buff for her. Moving on, we have Ling with some big adjustments. 
His passive skill gets a stronger critical chance converter, while skill 1 will give better critical stats in the late game. His second skill attack bonus is increased to 60%, while the energy cost is lowered by 5 points. The energy cost is lowered so that it can match the purple buff adjustment. Another new effect is it will no longer cost energy when used above the wall. As you can see, my energy bar is still full. But if you use it on land, it will cost energy. So that means you get to use his second skill more often. To balance, the developers remove the heal and slow effect of his second skill. Another nerf is the lower the attack speed ratio from 80 down to 40%. That means we'll only get 40% attack speed from items and emblems. I think the developers want to build him with burst items instead of attack speed. Next on the chopping board is Ruby. They've removed the initial 10% spell vamp on her passive skill. She'll now have to rely on emblem stats on the early stages of the game. Slow duration is also shorter for her first skill. Instead of slowing them for 2 seconds, it's now to 1 second. So Ruby's trash. Let me know. Let me know what y'all think. I think this is like a... This is hard. It's I harder. think this is just fine since her first skill has a short cooldown. Next, we have Tigril with a shorter stun duration on his ultimate. From 2.5 down to 1.8 seconds on the combined phase of his ultimate. There's a side-by-side -side comparison with his ultimate stun duration. Next is the adjustment on Jawhead's passive. His passive skill will now increase the damage dealt to enemies and it includes the damage from allies. That's 1% per stack and its maximum is at 10 stacks. So if Jawhead hits an enemy 10 times, the next damage will increase by 10%. And it also includes the damage coming from Jawhead's teammates. So he's more like a sport that can amplify the damage of his allies. What can our Jawhead users say about this update? Next is the buff on Eve. They've increased the damage of her first skill by 40%, but in return, they're removing the extra effect when you hit an enemy hero in the middle part. That means no more extra damage and cooldown reduction when your target is in the middle part of the skill. They said it's a way to make her easier to play and clear waves much faster. Next is the buff on Farsa. They've increased her second skill damage by 100 points in the early game. The developer said she isn't performing well in high rank matches, so they decided to improve her lane clearing ability. That's right, because when compared to Vexana, Farsa's clearing ability is kinda slow. Next is the buff on Lolita. The developer said her passive shield takes too long to stack and it's not compatible in fast-paced battles. Fix this, Lolita will now give one stack of shield to herself and allies after casting a skill. So it's a faster way to collect shield from her passive. Maybe you can use it to save allies that are about to die. Another buff is the shortened cooldown on her first skill. From 10 seconds, it's now 7.5 at late game. That's Next is bad. the adjustment on Mia. They've reduced the number of scattering arrows on her second skill from 8 down to 6. To maintain its old damage, they had to adjust base and attack scaling of the arrows. Next is the experimental changes on Joy. Instead of giving CC immunity, her ultimate will now only get slow immunity. To compensate, the damage will no longer decrease yeah. over the same. That's what I love to see. Nerf her. Like, she's too OP. She's broken. In target. As you can see, her color is now normal during the ultimate state. So, higher damage in exchange for CC immunity. Is this a fair trade? But since it's labeled as experimental, there's still a chance for this to get cancelled. Next is the buff on Masha. Her basic attack range and base attack is increased. This is her new basic attack range. That means she can reach her enemies a bit easier now. Another buff is the shortened cooldown on her second skill. That's around 7 to 4 seconds removed on the skill. Will this make Masha usable? Next is the nerf on Matilda. Ultimate will have a longer cooldown from 40 to now 65 seconds. But in return, if you hit an enemy hero on its second phase, the cooldown will get reduced by 40%. So that means you will get a longer cooldown if you use the ultimate to escape. If you want shorter cooldown, the second phase has to hit an enemy hero. Next right. is the buff on Alice. 
Her passive skill will now grant 3% mana regen per second instead of the old 1.5%. The effect where you get double mana regen during battles is now removed. This is good because you can recover your mana faster. Next are the item changes. The new item Sky Piercer will now lose 30% of your current stacks when you die. The developer said it's a way to punish the carrier on their late game deaths. Rose Gold Meteor and Magic Bleed will have lower cost price. Next Dang. are the talent adjustment. Or and Magic fire. Bleed will have That's lower a cost fire change. That's definitely a fire change. Price. Next are the talent adjustments. Brave Smite can only heal if you hit an enemy hero. Previously, you can use it on minions and jungle monsters. But now it's limited on heroes. To balance, they increased its healing ability by 1%. Healing Spree will now heal 15% of the missing HP instead of the old 10% max HP. Weakness Finder will now have weaker slow and attack speed reduction, but in return, the duration is longer. So that means you can slow the enemies by 1 second instead of 0.5. And that's it for our weekly advanced server update. Do you like the new talents? How about the purple buff changes? Share it in the comment section. That's all for this video. Stay safe and thank you for watching. That was nice. That was interesting. A lot of interesting changes going on. I can't wait to see the impact that it's going to have on the meta because that should be interesting to see. But yeah, let me know what you all think. How do you all feel about this? Which one of these changes do you all like the most? Which ones do you not like so much? Let me know your thoughts. But yeah, we'll end it here. I'll see you all in the next video. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn notifications. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace out, y'all.